this is a video that I was, uh, well, it was planned to happen, it was planned to be posted around the end of the month, because this wasn't supposed to come until the 27th. It's come a couple weeks earlier than expected. This should be a B&K model 465 uh, CRT tester from, I believe, 1966. The seller who shipped this to me from, well, obviously, eBay, um, is from, I believe it was from either San Francisco or San, San Francisco or San Diego, California. I had to go back and look. I don't remember the seller's name. If I did, I'd give him a shout out. Uh, you can obviously tell. I don't know if it's just me. Maybe. Maybe you don't, maybe some of you disagree with me, but it almost looks like, to me, this seller that shipped this out of either San Francisco or San Diego, I don't remember, used an excessive amount of tape around this. CRT tester. There's some more uh, padding down there inside the box. The box down there. Not that anyone cares what it was packaged with. It looks like we got some more uh, bubble wrap in tape. Well, he really used that. He really went all out using excessive amount, a real excessive amount of tape. Here's the CRT tester in its case. A nice little, nice little carrying case. And a nice little flat, a bit rusty, and a bit dirty the case, and you can see the material is peeling off there, but uh, no big deal as long as it works. Here we have uh, the model 465 B&K CRT tester, We've got the manual, uh, we got the model, the setup chart. I'm glad it came with this. Uh, I can use that for reference. I tried to make sure I found one that had at least the manual and the manual with it in this. So I did get that, and I got a thing for color tubes. Uh, I have an old, uh, I have a 1988 Zenith color CRT monitor slash television that I can use for test subject. I don't know if that's I can use for test subject. I also have a Philco Predicta in the basement. Which needs the CRT tested. It needs the uh, the CRT needs to be checked on it, and we'll use that for test subjects as well. So the wires and everything seem to be intact. Here's the plug. Kind of an interesting look here. I don't know if I've ever seen an AC. I don't know if I've ever seen an AC, a North American type AC AC plug like this, AC jack like that, with a little handle thing on the end. All right. In the back in the house now, and we're going to ta test the CRT in this 1959 Philco Predictor Princess model 100L4343. Uh, kind of blocking the light there, but uh. This one is all already pretty uh, accessible. It's got the back off of it. I just gotta pull the. And this is a I don't know what number this is. It's back in there somewhere. It's a 17. It's on here somewhere. Uh, 17. Uh, I'm missing the tube check chart. Hold on, let me see if I can find that first. I also gotta get going on. Uh, I might have to take a dinner break here and uh, get some got some frozen pizzas in the freezer that are supposed to go in the oven tonight. So 
Or, uh, should probably grab those and get those set up real quick here, and then we'll while we wait for the oven to heat up for that, we'll see what we can do with this. All right, so let's test this thing out here. Uh, we got a 1959 Philco Predict the Princess chassis 10L43. The CRT is I had to kind of get up in there to uh, see what kind of CRT it was with the flashlight. It looked like it was from what I saw 17DA P4, and I got the service manual for it here. And this isn't the service manual for this particular model. It's for all focal predict uh, models, chassis 10L432 to 10L43. And so it labels the different tube numbers and focal predictors here. So 21EVP4, 17DAP4, and 17DRP4. It doesn't really matter if I. It doesn't really matter. I don't have to figure out which one of this. It's a 17, but I don't. It's a 17 inch, but it doesn't really matter. I don't have to figure out which one of the 17s it is, because they both have the same, uh, same, same heater voltage and everything. It's both. It's the same. Heater voltage should be set at 6.28, 6, 6 2.68 volts. There we go. Uh, I got it down to three volts, and we'll. Apply our voltage here. Let me, uh, alright, take our type A socket, put it on there. Make sure that's on good enough. And we'll apply our voltage here. So, heater adjustment. There we go. We got the power indication light is on, so we got power. And yeah, it's around 2.68 volts. I can't really do anything with this heater adjustment, which I'll take a look at that. It's kind of, it feels like it's stuck. It needs to be loosened up a bit. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. It is very tight. Maybe I need to spray some WD-40 in that and loosen it up or something. Well, wait a minute for the, uh, CRT to warm up here first. Alright, so our CRT is warmed up. We got filament voltage. And we'll do our emissions test here. Check the emissions here. And it's in the. Well, that seems a little excessive to me. Uh. Cut off. And we have cut off. Alright, so we got good emissions. Shorts, we got no shorts. So we got no shorts. We'll see how much life it has left in it now. So you push this to the right. Uh, we're gonna go back to uh, emissions, and it should drop down to zero. It shouldn't drop down very. If it starts dropping down rapidly, then the CRT doesn't have very much life left in it. Not gonna get very much life le out of it if it starts rapidly okay okay so it seems like it has some life left in it Usually when it, start, when it goes down rapidly to all the way back down to zero, it doesn't have very much life left in it. Let's see what it says here. Um, the meter port pointer momentarily remains fixed or slightly increases and then slowly drops to zero. The tube is acceptable. If the meter reading begins to slump towards zero rapidly, the tube cannot be expected to last, last much longer. So this CRT test test pretty good. So this... uh. CRT test good. 
And it's removing the shorts, restoring the mission. Uh, we won't go over all this today. I don't have an older, old enough color set to uh, connect to this. But that's a quick test of this thing. So this thing does work. Um, go ahead and shut this off now. So this CRT is good. Alright, so here's the... I took the chassis out. Um, you can see underneath here we got these paper capacitors which are actually in fairly good uh, shape. About one, two, three, four here. We got the power transformer. We got the, here's the date, November 1966. And there's the, there's the switch, and that's the heater voltage adjustment here. And not much to it. There's a few resistors down here. Some more here. I think I showed already it has the schematic. This is the schematic for the uh, both adapters at the bottom here. So this is a little diagram, wiring diagram of the adapters. So it's handy to have in case you want to make your own. Um, and then this is the schematic of the whole unit. On the other side is a parts list. So there's, there's that. Okay, so I'm going to end this video right here, and I want to mention um, this does remove shorts. It repairs shorts, and I think it repairs open open elements in the CRT or open filaments. Remove shorts. So you got to remove shorts once it's when it's. So of course, plug you plug it in, and you switch it to uh, remove shorts. And I think you press this dyna the dynamic intensifier button. Uh, I have to go back in the manual. You have to press this dynamic intensifier button. Then you go back to emissions and check the emissions uh, and see if it check short check the shorts. Sorry, go back to shorts and check see if there's any. Uh, I've got any G1 shorts, G2 shorts, or H shorts. I don't think it can repair. It can't repair uh, cathode shorts. Uh, well, and there's no, uh, like it mentions in the manual, there's no real need to. The CRT still works fine. If you have a, uh, I think it meant, did mention something about if you had a dim, cloudy picture. I don't remember. I had to go back and look. But uh, yeah, no cathode ray tube tester, CRT tube tester. Um, B and K model four four six five CRT tester, good working condition from eBay, a seller in San Diego, California. And this will be put to good use uh, as I collect more vintage TVs and we take a look at them and repair them. So uh, this is where I'm going to end off this video. If you uh, if any suggestions or questions, put them in the comment section down below, of course. If you like this kind of content, then why not subscribe? Uh, you can like it if you want. I'm not going to force you to like it. I don't blab on like all these YouTube, other YouTubers do, especially at the beginning of the video. They tell you to like the video. I don't know how you're supposed to like a video before you've even watched it. All these YouTubers tell you to like it before the beginning of the video. And not no one in the tech community does, but you see all these other big community that, communities that do. But, uh... Now, I never even mentioned likes or anything like that at all. It's all up to the viewer. 
if they want to do that or not. I don't force anyone to do that. Kind of like these other bigger YouTubers do. But, uh, that's where I'm going to end this video. 